Hello and welcome to this next tutorial about, in this case, Entity Framework. This is a kind of a part two of my last video where I created a simple web API and .NET Core for beginners. So maybe you want to have a look at the first video. It's linked in the description below and you should also see the info card by now. So in the, in the last video, we created a web service with .NET Core. And now the next step would be to persist the data in a database. And this is the video for that. So what we are going to do, we will build or use Entity Framework to store data in a SQL Server database. In my case, I will use a SQL Server Express, but you'll see this in a few minutes. I also made the text a bit bigger, so hopefully uh, it's not too big and you can read the code properly. So what we have to do first is we already have our model, the calendar entry. Um, we have our service and the corresponding controller. And now to store everything in a database, we create a new folder called data. And in this folder, we will create a new C sharp class called data context. And this will be the context we have to access to get our data from the database. And to be able to do that, we also have to inherit from the class db context. And this is not available by now, but with control period, we can see that we can use the reference Microsoft Entity Framework core, and then everything is fine. Now, the next step is we need a constructor. We can use the built-in snippet CTOR, give this the class name data context. And now this thing is ta taking a parameter, and this parameter is a db context options of type data context, which is our class and call this options. And we have to use the base constructor of the DB context class. So what we can do is simply type colon base options, and that's already our constructor. And also we can put the braces up here so we get a little bit more space, format everything with control or with Alt, Shift and F, and we're done. Now the next thing is to give this thing also properties and these properties will be our tables later on in form of a so-called DB set, a database set. So the type is DB set of a certain type. And in our case, this would be the calendar entry. This is the model we have created in the last lesson. And we call this usually just the, we, we usually just pluralize the model in this case. So calendar entries. And this then will be the name of our table in our database. And of course, here we have to add the reference calendar service models. So again, we created the data context, which is using the DB context, which is part of Microsoft Entity Framework core. Then we added the constructor with the certain options. And after that, last thing is we added a DB set because with the help of the DB set calendar entries, Entity Framework will know which tables it should create. When we add new models right here, we also have to add a new DB set here and then utilize Entity Framework migrations to add these tables to our database. But we'll see that in a few minutes. Okay, that's it for the data context. We save this. And then the next step would be to already connect to the database with the help of a connection string. And the connection string can be added here into the app settings JSON. There are two app settings, the development one and the other one. 
without development and we will use this one right here the app settings json because this is overriding everything we will use so we just use the app settings json here and we add a new section and this section is called connection strings and this thing is getting something like a default connection now the name connection strings is kind of mandatory and default connection this thing here is totally up to you you don't have to call it default connection but it's just the way to go and now this is the most tricky part i'd say if you're using sql server and it's on your local machine you can do something like server in my case it's localhost and since i'm using a sql server express i have to type sql express then the database this is up to you what you want to use here in our case we can simply call this calendar because we have a calendar service in this example and then you also have to add trusted connection equals true and add a semicolon in the end and that's it and here's a comma missing yes okay now where do i get this from when i have a look at the at this thing here the uh, microsoft sql server management studio you can see that my database is called seek or not not my database but my server is called sql express and there's something standing um, in front of the the backslash so maybe you have to enter the full name as it's given here so win dash ul and so and so on maybe in your case you see something like local db or your server name anything like that and just try it it will work but you'll have to find the correct name and make sure that you enter two backslashes here because this would be the escaping character when you when, when i try to use only one backslash it's trying to escape the s in this case and this simply wouldn't work so you have to enter two backslashes okay that's our connection string and now the next thing is to use this connection string and we will do that in the startup cs right here in the configure services method and what we have to do here is let me close this so we have more space services add db context of type data context data context and this thing is taking an expression a lambda expression first let me add the reference here using calendar service data and what are we going to do here now we have to give give this thing more information about what kind of server we are using in our case it's the sql server so we hit use sql server and this thing is also getting a configuration configuration and then get connection string this is why we had to call this uh, this this part in the app settings json connection strings and here we can add the name of the connection string which is default connection and that's it and here the squiggly lines there's still something missing we have to use microsoft entity framework core again and then it recognizes this function okay and this configuration here is this configuration right here that we use in the startup method and with get connection string we are accessing again the 
this part here of the app settings JSON and with default connection, we get exactly this connection string. Okay, so services at DB context. Now our, our application knows about the data context with the correct database and the correct connection string. And now we are able to use Entity Framework to create our database. So we save everything. I open the Explorer and now I open the terminal. I stop the application. And now let's see, let's get some space. Now, how to use Entity Framework, you just type .NET EF and with dash H, you get a first overview what you can do. And as you can see here, we have three commands, database, DB context and migrations. And the one that's interesting for us now is migrations. So we type migrations, then add, and then we can give it a name. Usually we call this initial or initial migration. And when we type enter, then Entity Framework is trying to do its magic. But let's see if this works. Okay, as we can see already, lots of stuff is happening here, but we get an error. And as you can see, the error states, the entity type calendar entry requires a primary key to be defined. And that's different from our last lesson. In our last lesson, we simply added this model and used it to save some mock data back and forth between client and service. But now it's essential that we have a primary key. Since we're using a real table, and what we can do is simply add an integer with the name ID and Entity Framework recognizes this name of the property ID and then assumes that this is our primary key of this table. So this is the only change that was needed. So let's save this and just try it again with .NET EF migrations at initial. And that's it, done. The migration was achieved. And what was created is this folder here, migrations. And here we have three files. The last two are more technical stuff for Entity Framework. It's necessary for Entity Framework. So it knows where the, or it knows the state of the current migration. So Entity Framework just knows what's going on right here and or right now. And this one is more interesting for us. Of course, this is also important for Entity Framework, but it's, it's more readable for us and we understand what's going on here. So you see two methods, up and down. And in essence, up and down simply means that this method here, the up method, is called when we want to use this migration, activate it, and the down method is used when we want to, to roll back the, the migration. You can see in the up method, what's, what's happening is Entity Framework will create a new table with the name calendar entries. This is actually the name of our DB set. Then it will create the table and then some columns like the ID, date and title, and also the constraint primary key for our ID field. And with the down method, it would simply drop the table and it's gone. So this is the migration. And now to actually run the migration, there's another command, of course. And what we can do is .NET EF and then database update. We use update even though we have no database yet, but this simply means that if the database does not exist, it will be created by Entity Framework. So hit return. And we got an error. So there seems to be something wrong with the connection string. Server, localhost, 
See, as I told you, this is the hardest part. And what I did wrong is this colon here. You don't have to enter the colon. You have to enter the equal sign. So server equals localhost SQL Express database calendar and trusted connection true. It's good that this is happening because it really is, it, it's driving me nuts. Actually, the connection string is always the most or the hardest part. Let's try it again. .NET Entity Framework Database Update. And now this looks better. All right, great. And by the way, you can see here what Entity Framework actually did, a create table with a certain columns. Okay, now when we go to the Management Studio, we refresh the view, we see our new database calendar and also the table calendar entries. The table EF migrations history again is just for Entity Framework, nothing to worry about, but this thing right here, calendar entries, is our new table with all the columns we need. Now, of course, we can enter something like 2019, August 29th, and the title is work on my new project. Okay, now we have an entry here. And now the big question is, although this already is a big milestone, Entity Framework is working and the connection to the database is working, but now of course we have to receive this data. So we, we created this entry and uh, how do we get this now? So we go back to our service, calendar entry service, and we already have our create calendar entry and get calendar entries methods. And now we have to change th something, of course. Now, the first thing we can do is we want to get the list of calendar entries. And this thing can be accessed with context, which is not already there. We have to give this method the context. And then the context has all the calendar entries. And we would then add a to list to this. But what about the context? So let me remove this just for a second. To get the context, we have now to add a constructor to the calendar entry service. So CTOR tab and then calendar entry service. And now we inject the data context, give this a name, and with control period, we can say create and initialize field context. And what I like to do is add an underscore here and there, and also, of course, use the calendar service data namespace. Okay, now the context is available. And when I uncomment this, it also recognizes the context and to list is part of link. So we have to add the link reference. Okay. And in essence, I can remove this whole thing here and try this thing out. So we save this and now we run our application again with .NET watch run. application is running and now in postman I still have my get localhost 5000 API calendar entry so I get I should get all the entries I hit send and I really get the entry of our new database now that's a success and maybe if I enter another entry 20 Eighth now maybe go to the gym almost gym right there 
Okay, and now sent, and I get both entries. That's nice. And I think the last example would be to create a new entry. And to do that, we already have the create method here. And what we want to do is, again, we access the context and access all the calendar entries of the context. And now we simply add the entry that was given by the client. And now something important, we, the, since this is a change to our calendar entries, we have to save changes. And now we can simply again get all the entries, entries for example, and return them here in this line and also make this a list. Okay, save again. And it's restarting. Okay, and now we go back to Postman. And in this case, again, we would use the post API calendar entry. And yeah, there's already the ID three with this certain date and it's Christmas. So just hit send. And we get an error. Sure, we don't need the ID here. Hit send again. And now it's working. And as you can see here, we get the whole list back with the third entry. And in our database, when I again, just let me show the the top 200 entries, we see the third one right here. So that's nice. This is working. I said that's the last thing to do, but maybe we can complete the CRUD operations. So we also need an update. And to do an update, again, let's just return the whole list of calendar entries. Update calendar entry. And let's say the client is sending a whole entry with the ID of the entry. And now what we got to do is what we're going to do is we create the or we are getting the, the entry from our database. So we have a single, let's call it entry to update a single entry. And this can be found with context, calendar entries, then first or default, E for entry. And we need the entry where the ID equals the given ID. And when we got this, we can say entry to update date equals then the given entry date and entry to update title equals entry title. Then the next thing, this thing is changed now. So we got the entry to update with every changes. And then we're telling the context of the calendar entries to update the entry to update. And after that, again, we have to save the changes. And then again, maybe just return the whole list of calendar entries. This should be it. So what we're going to do is in the update calendar entry and a new entry is given or an entry with updated properties. But the ID is important in this case, because we are then using the ID of this given entry to get the correct calendar entry from our database. Then we just overwrite the date and the title. Then we call an update and save the changes in our data context and then return the complete new list. 
Of course, we also have to add this method to our interface right here. And also we need a method in our controller to access this thing from the client. So let's just copy this thing here. Instead of create, we call this update. The rest should be the same. We, we give an entry and we have the result and just change the create here. So we call the update calendar entry method. And then we need to give this thing a new attribute because I want to use the put method in this case. Okay, save this. The app is restarting. Beautiful. And now in Postman, we can simply switch to put, add the ID again because now we need it and say this is Christmas 2 sent and we updated our entry and as we can see again in the database close this and let's get the result again and here we see Christmas 2. Okay nice this is also working now there are only two methods left to complete the CRUD operations. The first one would be to get a single entry and the last one would be to delete it. So a single entry is get calendar entry and we need an ID for that and the same or a similar one would be to delete a calendar entry similar because we also need an ID but it doesn't return anything back although we could return the whole list why not delete calendar entry get calendar entry save this and now in the calendar entry service we can implement the last two methods right here this one is pretty easy because we actually did it already right here we copy this line go back and this is not the entry to update but the let's say result and we want to find this id the given id here and simply return the result and now actually we can copy this call this entry to delete and so we get the entry and now we say context calendar entries remove entry to delete again we have to change uh, save our changes and then we return context calendar entries to list. All right, so we got the service done and now the controller. Let me use this thing right here. We can copy this and instead of a list we get only one calendar entry back we have to give this thing an ID calendar entry and also call the calendar entry method from the server with the given ID we sent the result back but now we also should change the route and we can change the route in two ways first one would be to add the route attribute and add this string as a route and the the braces here just mean that this is a parameter which is used in the method this one so id in this case would be this id 
and then also this ID. This is also this is already totally fine, or we can make this a bit shorter and just add the brackets here and the parentheses here and then the braces right here. And we're also done. Now again the, the route would be actually API, then the name of the controller, slash, and then the ID. That's the get method. And then we can copy this again for our delete. We just add HTTP delete, call this delete calendar entry, and we get a list back. And call our delete method. Okay. So we added our get and our delete method and now let's test this. First thing would be the get where we enter an ID, for instance the one. And we're getting the first entry back, same with the second and the third. And now when we want to delete this, we just use the delete HTTP method. Still have the same URL, sent, and it's deleted. And again, when we have a look at the database, it is gone. Perfect. So this is a really quick way to just add Entity Framework in 30-ish minutes. And uh, yeah, I hope this was helpful. Again, if so, please click the like button or even subscribe to this channel. And if you want more tutorials like that, please let me know, send me an email, write a comment. If you need any help, some online coaching, tutoring, I'm there for you. Just tell me and I'm sure we will find a solution for you. So again, thanks for watching and happy coding.